he's not. He's not. Oh, uh, okay. All right, ready. Are you recording right now? Well, yeah. Oh my gosh, <laughs> yeah. What? Sorry. I'll delete it. I'll delete it. No, this. bloopers. We love it. <laughs> hey, everyone, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kaylee Gray, and I'm making weekly vlogs about life, faith, and relationships. And I'm super excited to have this amazing power couple with me, Sarah and Moses yeah. E. Hambi. Yes! yes! Good job! <laughs> I practiced. I really did. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, they are just an amazing couple. How long have you guys been married? Going on 12 years. Yep. 12 yes. years. Oh my goodness. And they have five children. Five beautiful children. And Girls. so actually the first time I met you guys, like I had seen you guys around, but the first time I met you was actually at a children's birthday party. I was there with the kids I babysat. And usually like kids' birthday parties are chaotic. This was the most organized, well put together oh, like birthday what? party I had ever been to. And you, I just was like, amazing because I'm an Enneagram one so I like loved it I was like this is awesome <laughs> so y'all throw some amazing so birthday parties funny, because we we literally like we kind of just planned it stuff. and everything just yeah. boop like in a day or two yeah well the holy spirit was there there yes <laughs> I love it well um if you guys have not subscribed to this channel please hit that red button below and follow me on my other social medias and also be sure to follow these guys because they have some exciting stuff coming up oh, yeah. soon and so be sure to follow them and check out what they're doing for the kingdom of god so all right so we are going to be talking about boundaries in relationships so i mean i feel like there's boundaries um, singles need boundaries. I mean, I feel like married people need boundaries. Absolutely. You need boundaries in friendships, yeah. like just all types of relationship yeah. boundaries. But as a single, when you are getting ready to start dating or you are dating somebody, what are some boundaries that you guys used in your relationship of dating and everything? Yeah. Um, well, I would say first and foremost, as a man, like you don't want to put yourself in a situation where you could stumble or fall with the woman that you love and you know she's the hottest and the, you know you just care so much about her you don't want to put yourself in a situation where you could fall as a, as a man right mm -hmm. um, in the Bible it says um, it's better to marry than to burn with passion right um, that's one of the reasons that's one of the reasons why we got married um, um, uh, sooner than we wanted to you know and some other reasons and whatnot with contracts and stuff like that <laughs> but it was important that I know for myself as a man um, to set a boundary of man. I can't be with I can't be with Sarah super late at night by myself, right? I have to have um, we have to have couples with us, right? Or I'm so huge on having a, a band of brothers, right? Guys that will encourage you, guys that will keep you accountable, guys that will just keep you on a straight and narrow, you know, because I mean. We're, we're, we're not perfect, right? We fall yeah. sometimes and you need those people to just to, to keep you up and, and rooted or whatnot. But at the same time, those guys also help you to stay accountable with what they know you're called, you're, like you're calling or whatnot, yeah. right? And that's, that's holiness. And if I put myself in a situation where I'm with Sarah late at night and all that dang stuff can happen. And that, those are things that that's not gonna, not a great representation of holiness and that's not a great rep representation of um, me being, um, a leader for her, her spiritually. That's, you know what I'm That's so good. Yeah. And for me, when I started dating, I was dating probably, I don't know, a lot of a lot of people in my life I had dated up until I went to school at Oral Roberts University. And so with dating came a lot of boundaries that were not put in place because I was the only Christian that I knew at that time. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't know what it meant to be a woman of God who also kept boundaries uh, and a woman of God who knew how to honor her own body or her own heart, probably more importantly. And so in all of my relationships, I just would especially with my heart immediately open up and immediately get into the heart and just create these really really strong and unhealthy connections without the promise of anything with no timeline in mind just I mean you know as long as we're on the phone I would just keep on talking or they would keep on talking and I would listen and I think it prematurely set up me to latch on to them uh, emotionally and spiritually but then eventually physically because when you start giving your heart to somebody then eventually you, you naturally the body follows mm -hmm. and so when I came to Oral Roberts University as a freshman I didn't have any experience of what it meant to uh, honor God in my relationships in the way that 
women at the university had. And so what I started learning is I wanted to understand God as husband. And so what that meant to me was I set this boundary where I'm not going to talk to other guys or text other guys, even if they're men of God, because I don't want to cheat on my husband is how I was understanding it. And so when Moses walked into my life, I felt a strange peace and even confusion with God because I said to myself, well, Lord, I just gave myself to you. You're my husband and I've only been doing this for a couple of Wouldn't months. Look out, God. And, uh, and I felt like he kind of was dropping me like I was hot and giving me off to another guy already. And I just, I felt kind I felt confused. I felt hurt by it, but I also knew it was God calling me into a relationship, even though I wasn't ready for it. And I didn't even know if I found Moses attractive, but I knew God's she voice. Does now. I knew God's voice well enough at that time that this is what he was calling me to and that peace was hard to argue with if you will and so if you're someone who's single for an example uh, and you're trying to say man I'm ready for that next step whether you know of course engagement and marriage I think something that would be very profitable for you is to not entertain entertain any side conversations that aren't pointing to anything you know whether it's you leading on that guy because he's the sweet nice guy that everyone loves and you kind of know he's into you more than you are but it feels good and it's comfortable because it does feel good to be loved, uh, really being a, a, a wise woman of valor and saying, hey, John, we'll go with John, that John, you're an amazing friend and I can't tell you uh, how special you make me feel, but I feel conflicted in my heart and I feel conviction because I'm doing it for the wrong reason. I'm doing it to feel a void that I know only God can and, I, and this relationship I think is, is telling, communicating something that it shouldn't be. I, I'm just, I'm not ready to be in a relationship with you or take it there. As my friend, I want to keep you, but as far as, uh, as taking it further, it's just, it's not, I can tell I'm not supposed to be moving in that direction, whatever that conversation looks like. But the whole point of me sharing that is I think when we allow our heart to be loved by relationships that are seeking more than we are, or we are more than they are, it, it, it fills a void that God is wanting us to keep open for what, whoever that special person is. And so I often use like, if you embrace the place that you're in, then you can't be replaced. And so in this context, what I mean by that is if this is my hand and I have a candle in it, then obviously I can't also put my backpack in it because there's something else there. And so if I have John, my friend here, or if I'm a man and I've got Shirley, my girlfriend, my friend that's a girl here, whatever, then when my real wife walks in, I don't have room, mind space or capacity wow. or even time to allow her to be in my life because I'm engaging with these counterfeits. Mm -hmm. And so um, as Habakkuk 2.2 tells us, it's an often quoted scripture uh, in Christianity, but it's write down your vision and make it plain so that the runner has a, a vision to run with basically. And so so uh, you may have done this maybe five years ago, you may have done it 10 months ago, I don't know, but I would encourage you to get quiet before the Lord and say, Jehovah, you made me, I'm your creation, you know what's best for me more than I do, help me to let go of everything that's not yours and help me to uh, cling to the only thing that you'd have me to do and then base your boundaries off of that and so make your list of exactly what fills you, whatever that looks like and just keep that tucked away somewhere and then just start filling your life with same gendered friends and cheer them on, celebrate them and similar to what our sister Kaylee is doing. Uh, she's making podcasts for a scenario that she herself finds herself in, but instead of, you know, crying about it or which it's okay again I told her it's okay to cry yeah. and it's okay to feel sad it's okay to feel stuck and it's okay to feel behind these are lies that come and some of them are honest truths of where we want to be and where we're not um, but in the process of that and saying but I still trust God and holding up your white flag I surrender to his path I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be I'm here on purpose because I have a purpose anyways Let's go. And, uh, and really <laughs> believing that it's exactly where you're supposed to be and so I think in those moments of, of trust and faith um, it, it is less attractive for you to entertain the Johns in your life or the Shirley's, which is weird name combinations, whatever. That's my grandma's name. Oh, I was like, no, it's so funny. Like, we love you, Shirley. I, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um, but it's less attractive because then you're taking things in your own strength. And when we, we know that anything a man does, it leads to death and to decay. And we don't want to welcome those types of vibes into our life. But when we cling to what God has for us, the property of God just alone is peace and it's love and it's joy. And you start getting yeah. this such a peace and a confidence in the stage of life that you're in that you don't have time to engage with conversations that are going nowhere anyways. And so that was the first thing that I did. And for me, in my case, it wasn't but months later for me and for Mo, then that's not a promise to you because some of y'all have been practicing this type of solitude for years and you still find yourself in the position that you're in, but uh, it's because God's doing something big and the calling that he has in your life requires a, a, a level of tearing that maybe I didn't have to go through on this on that side of my relationship but I am in a different way here and so everything is where it should be and continue to, to trust God as you ask him for healthy boundaries and you have community around you to help uh, keep that standard in the process I love that and I love to I mean you said so many amazing things I was just like yes like that is a word right there 
But I loved how you said counterfeit because um, I've shared too, um, probably like eight years ago, there was a guy that I was interested in and I prayed about him and fasted and like, you know, sh God, God, should I move forward with this relationship? And God told me he was my counterfeit. And I was just like, oh, really, God, I'm like, he's amazing. But then um, years later, we were still friends and things like that. And so then I was like, well, maybe I didn't hear God right. Like maybe, you know, maybe he wasn't my counterfeit. Well, he ended up, he really was, you know, like that. But I do, I felt like, not that I wasted those three years, but I compared everyone to him. I, I did, I had like that him as my candle in my hand and that's, I didn't have the eyes for somebody else. Even though I said I did, I really didn't have the eyes for somebody else yeah. to come in. So I really love how you said that. And I know you said some practical things of like, you know, you couldn't be together late and you know, you kind of maybe didn't hang out with the opposite sex as much. Do you have any other like practical things that somebody should do for setting boundaries? And I know everybody's boundaries are are different and like I, I told you guys like a friend of mine told me she like fasted her boyfriend they fasted each other once a week because they you know live in the same um, area and so they were together all the time and so they would spend one day apart each week didn't mean they didn't talk to each other that day but they would spend at least one day apart where they you know weren't hanging out and so I don't know do you guys have any other like practical um, boundaries that well, not boundaries yeah, just right? Advice. Yeah, advice for, for... You know, what I'm learning right now is just the, the power of prayer, but not only the power of prayer, but also the power of listening, mm. right? Because we go to God, <clears throat> and we're like, God, this, that, and you're basically talking to God and letting him know what's all, go what's all going on, and then amen, and leave. And it's like, mm. God is the master coach, and in order for you to get coached, you have to listen, mm. right? So. Whenever you're doing your prayer of whatever situation, um, relationship, whatever is going on, like get in that quiet place and pray. But after you pray, just as long as you, you've prayed, like listen. Mm, be good. still and just listen. And the word of God, it says be still and know that I'm God, mm -hmm. right? But just as it's like, just be, just be here, let, let me coach you. Let me be there for you. Let me give you the answers. Let me lead you and guide you and mend you and mold you. Yeah. But he can't do that if we're okay. Amen. Bye. It's like it's like you're going. Yeah. To God. It's like you're going to God and doing all these things. I'm, I'm waiting for an answer, Father, and then boom, and then God's like, uh, what? What? Uh, okay. Bye. So right. So true. Wow. That's so just true. be in that be in that quiet place and just just seek a master coach, yeah. and it's God. That's awesome. I love that. One thing that came to my mind was when Moses and I started dating, um, keeping God. Uh, a center focus was important mm -hmm. and so we wanted to practically incorporate that into our daily living and our daily relationship and so we would read the proverbs every night there's only 31 proverbs and there's usually 30 days in a month yeah, sure. and yeah. so every night uh, he would call me or i would call him and then we would just usually take half and half or read every other verse together and mm -hmm. we never discussed it didn't get holy in that sense or teach or preach on it it just was incorporating the word of god and we were young i was 19 he was probably 21 um not that that matters age doesn't matter but uh yeah. so y'all can take it deeper but don't stress yourself out on it we just would read the word of god together and then we would go to sleep, um, him and his door, mine and mine. Uh, and then on Sundays, um, <laughs> uh, then on Sundays we would fast all day until I think supper. Um, oh gosh, it was it was just that. the yeah. yeah it was just a way to give God um, you know it was only half of a day for the week, <laughs> but yeah. a way to incorporate again a, a godly lifestyle, feeding the spirit man so that our physical man wouldn't be as strong, you know, for the lust of the flesh or whatever that might look like, and so yeah. just giving opportunity for the spirit to thrive and to grow. Um, yeah. I also had, had passed the boundaries way too much, way too long with other relationships. And I, I'm sure Moses too, that we decided we didn't want to kiss until we were engaged. Um, some people choose marriage, others they just don't have a boundary on it and that's fine. So whatever your boundaries are with mm -hmm. that, that was something that we did um, that we did practice. And uh, I think that that helped things slow down <laughs> and not <laughs> um, speed up because you're, you only can do so much. I remember my uncle told me that once you hit a threshold, then and inevitably it just it, it just keeps going faster and so if, if we off off the gate are already kissing and then we're holding hands immediately I mean we broke like two or three boundaries or bases it's really hard to not go for the home run right away because you're so yeah. comfortable touching and moving you know whatever yeah. Yeah. and so, um, so I, I think that 
those are important things to value and to keep a focus if you're trying to honor God in your relationship. At least that's what it looked like for us. Yeah, I love that. And I think too, even when you're single, you can still practice those boundaries, yep. even just with the opposite sex or yep. friendships or you know things like that. Those are just practical things to to incorporate God more into your life every day. So yep. I love that. Absolutely. Wow. Well, do you have anything else before we end the vlog that you want to share to encourage singles yep. or? Yes, I'm gonna have to hit on community, yeah. like and support, right? Yeah. And um, a, a Bible character, my favorite Bible character in the in the Is it Moses? It's Moses. Come on, Moses did a fantastic job with surrounding himself with support, mm -hmm. um, with having community. Like yeah. right when you when you think about, there was hundreds of thousands of people that Moses was over, right? And um, because he surrounded himself with support, Jethro, his father-in-law. Um, he, he then knew that, man, I can't do this on my own. I can't be, I can't be, I can't experience greatness with handling all this by myself. So Jethro was there as support to tell him, hey, Moses, you gotta delegate these different um, uh, tasks with the other people that you trust in, your, in this tribe, right? And, and because he did that, he was, he was able to lead the people the way that he led, right? But then another story about Moses, whenever Moses went up the mountain, um, because the Amalekites and the Israelites were, were in battle, right? Um, and um, the Amalekites were so grand and, and bigger and more experienced than the Israelite army. Um, so Moses was like on his face, God, what should we do, right? And God gave him instruction, go up this mountain. When you get up to the mountain, lift up your arms. When you lift up your arms, the Israelite army is going to defeat the Amalekites, right? So he was obedient, he did it, he got up there, he did exactly what he was doing, but whatever you're, whenever your arms are lifted up for a long period of time, like your arms get tired, right? And in the text, it tells us that Moses had support, right? He had Aaron and Ur there. When Aaron and Ur saw that Moses' arms were going down and the, the Israelites were losing the, the, the battle, they quickly ran to Moses and threw a, a, a stone under his butt so he could rest, and they also held up his arms for him. Mm. And because they did that, Moses experienced, uh, Moses and the Israelites experienced God's favor and God's um, wisdom and, 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 and greatness and victory, right? Yeah. And that victory could not have happened if Moses did not first surround himself with people, support, like-minded people, right? Mm -hmm. As singles, even as married couples, like we gotta surround ourselves with people that have tasted salt before we have. Like we have, we have a, a marriage mentor that kind of speaks into us and yeah. allows us to do different things. And then Elvis and Desi, you know, that, that counts with us um, when we, before we got married, they, they're still in our lives, right? And because yeah. of that, we're experiencing being able to master our marriage and not allowing our marriage to master us. That's you so know good. what I'm saying? So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that'll go into the very last piece that we wanted to mention. <laughs> the whole thing. So this announcement that we've been super excited oh, about. Yeah. This will be the first time it'll hit the airwaves that uh, Kayla gave us the opportunity or the option to share. And I, I thought about it as we were sitting here and what better place than here to probably Come say on. it. But Moses and I are so passionate about healthy marriages and healthy parenting and, he and healthy singling. And singling. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that we're actually, uh, de we've developed a program, like a, a curriculum that we'll be taking couples and married couples and singles and parents through to help coach them to live their best life if you will and so it's called master parenting and master marriage and then also master self but not because you yourself have the ability to master yourself but when the master lives in you you can do all things master and so uh, you can kind of stay posted for that we're going to be launching our website soon in a couple of weeks but uh, it's something that we're so passionate about that we're throwing everything into it uh, and I guess doing a pivot yeah. <laughs> with it because we just were super, super passionate wow. about healthy Sorry relationships. About yeah. yeah, I love it. I didn't know that. I knew something I was coming, but I knew yeah. I didn't know what it. That's so why we did Put your 3D glasses on because we're coming right at you. Oh my land! Yeah, come on. <laughs> He's a dad with lots of dad jokes. I know. Yep. Yes, he is. We love him. <laughs> oh, awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for You're just welcome. like taking the time to do this like Absolutely. I'm so excited to see what God is going to continue to do oh, through you guys and I hope that you guys feel encouraged from today's vlog I know I got so much out of it I'm like I can't wait to rewatch this <laughs> and I just like this was so good so thank you Absolutely. so much Thanks, and hope you guys have a great Friday yes bye, -bye. bye.